enjoyed each other's presence for 30 seconds. No! You know, and that was kind of nice! Actually, it was! Very nice! Yeah! I like being with you! Isn't that kind of funny? No. I, of course, I love being with you. And did you know, there's lots of stories in the Bible that makes me think that God likes being with us too. Whether we get together in the same room, or we're far apart, um, God is always with us. And we can be present with each other in lots of ways. Today's song is all about how we can be present with God and each other, no matter what the situation. There are lots of words, so if you don't end up singing along, that's okay. Maybe just jump in at the chorus, or every time I say, that's what you've done for me. Help me. 
that song. It reminds me of another story from the Bible that's all about how two women could be present with each other even in a really difficult time. Oh yeah, I know this story. It's a really good story. Hey, and quick trivia. How many books in the Bible are named after women? Do any of you know? I want you to think about it. Don't cheat. Think about it. And when we come back from the story, I'll tell you the answer. Do you remember that picture, Ralph? Remember when we first lived in Spokane? That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Oh, oh, look who's here, Ralph. Hey, hi. How's everyone? Ralph and I are just looking at our lives together. Ralph and I have been together a long time. Over 25 years ago, Ralph and I met in Iowa. Do you know where Iowa is? It's in the kind of middle of the country and oftentimes gets confused with Idaho. Idaho or Iowa. We moved from Iowa to Idaho. So Ralph and I were just talking about our past and I remember that when we moved from Iowa, we moved to Washington, a town called Spokane. And Ralph basically was raised in Spokane. For most of his life, Ralph lived there. And then it was decided that we would move down here to Boise. Well, Ralph had a decision. We told Ralph, because he had a lot of friends in Spokane, and the person that lived next door to us told us that he could stay with them because he was best friends with their dog. And we told Ralph, if you want to stay, we completely understand. Because it's hard to move away from people you know and love. It's hard to change or go somewhere where you don't know people. Have you ever had a move? Have you ever had to go somewhere you didn't want to go? It's not always easy, is it? So we thought we'd give Ralph the choice. And after thinking about it for a few moments, was it very long, Ralph said, no, I want to move with you. So Ralph is here and has lived here now almost 14 years in Boise. Which got me thinking about another story. Ralph, do you remember the story about Ruth and Naomi? It's a pretty good story, isn't it? Yeah. Well, let's tell them about the story. You see, once there was a family, a husband and wife and two boys, and a terrible famine. That means there was not enough food to eat. Happened in the country that they lived in, the country of Israel. So they decided to move to a foreign country, a new place. So the mom and the dad, the two boys, they moved to a different place. Well, when they got there, they started growing up and soon the two boys both got married and the husband and the wife, the two sons and the two daughters-in-laws all lived in the same area. Well, yeah, there's something terrible happened. The father and the two sons all passed away. It's very sad. And Naomi and Ruth and Opa were only the ones left. And Naomi decided that she wanted to move back home, that she wanted to be with her family. So she told her daughter-in-laws, Opa and Ruth, that they could stay here and live with their families. Well, they both thought about it, just like Ralph did. And Opa decided she wanted to stay with her family. So Naomi kissed Opa goodbye and told her to have a wonderful life. Then she turned to her other daughter-in-law named Ruth and said, Ruth, do you want to stay here too? And Ruth began to cry. No, I want to go with you. But Naomi said, Ruth, I can't, I'm old. You don't know anyone there. It'd be much better if you stayed here with your family. But Ruth kept pleading and crying, I want to go with you. So Ruth and Naomi moved back to Israel. And Ruth and Naomi stayed together. That's a lot like what Ralph did with our family. And there are times when we decide to move with somebody else so that we can stay close to them. Just like that. And all the characters in this story show compassion for the needs of the other. You're going to hear about how we share compassion with one another. Thanks for listening.
Let's keep looking at some pictures, Ralph. Oh, do you remember that one? <laughs> Have a good day. That story is a great example of compassion, compassion in action. But first things first, Bob, do you know how many books in the Bible are named after women? Wow, let, let me think here for a second, Casey. Uh, well, right away, uh, a name pops up to me, uh, uh, Ruth. Ruth. Okay, so that's that's one, Ruth. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's the story I, we just heard. That's the story we just heard. Yes, that's how cool we are, Ruth. Right on. Let's see. The other person. Let me guess. Uh, 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 lamentation. Uh, 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 or uh, let's see. Uh, how about oh, wait, Esther? Uh -huh. I think Esther. Yeah. So uh -huh. so we, if I add those up, I'm gonna guess two. Yep, you got it. Only two books in the Bible are named after women, but the more we think about it, you know there's lots of women throughout the Bible who do so many amazing things to help show compassion, show God's love, um, even help Jesus grow up. So, good things to remember, good things to keep looking into. Um, but one thing I really like about this story, about Ruth, is that sometimes it's hard to know what direction to take, but when we are present, to the experiences of those around us, we can trust that God will show us the compassionate way. Naomi showed compassion to Ruth and Orpah by encouraging them to return to their families. Yeah, and Ruth showed compassion to Naomi by going with her. Yeah, and all of them gave compassion in their own way, showing us that there are many ways to follow the Spirit's leading to love and care. You know what I'm feeling led to right now? What? I think it's time for some movement. Move yoga! <laughs> okay, so we are going to begin our movement today like we have been beginning every day this week. We're going to sit on the ground with our legs crossed, or you can sit on a chair with your legs firmly on, or with your feet flat on the ground and just take some deep breaths. And when we take three deep breaths today, I want you to think when you inhale and breathe in, I want you to think with an open heart and when we exhale, I am present to the spirit. So breathe in with an open heart and breathe out, I am present to the spirit. Let's do that three more times now. Breathe in with an open heart, breathe out, I am present to the Spirit. With an open heart, I am present to the Spirit. With an open heart, I am present to the Spirit. Now slowly rise and stand in mountain pose. In mountain pose, we feel our strength. We are unshakable. Now reach your arms up to the sky and then back down as you bend into a forward fold. And take a breath and roll slowly up into mountain pose. Now you can turn sideways on your mat and separate your legs. Yep, facing the camera. Oh, okay. there we go. Yep, make a nice wide stance. And if you want, you can turn your toes slightly in a little. Um, let's start with your forward foot is your left foot. So you're going to step that one to the front of the mat and maybe turn your back foot in just a little bit more. There you go. Um, deeply bend your left knee. But remember, you don't want your toes to go over, or you don't want your knees to go over your toe. Keep them above your ankle. And bend if you need to step back further to get the right angle, that's good. And place your right hand on the floor outside, uh, inside your foot if you're comfortable with that. Oh, I'm sorry, your left hand. Sorry, I forgot this. Um, if you can do that on the inside of your foot and keep your back leg straight. If that's too hard, then you can rest your elbow gently on your thigh. Like this, like that. Um, and you're going to reach your right hand straight up, kind of over, it's going to be nice and open. So the spirit stretches and opens us to our new flexibility. 
And now you can kind of windmill your arms if you want and put both of your hands, if you can reach that way, um, to the ground on either side of your foot or just as far as you can go, that's okay. And then try and straighten that front knee. And just kind of hold that for a breath or two. Um, and now, keep, rest your left hand on the side, yeah, and then open up and think when we are open and flexible, we see the world in a new way. And kind of bend back your left knee, place your hands on the ground, we're going to go to the middle, like this, okay. middle of your stance, middle of the, yep, okay. of your legs, and you're just going to bend to the other Fall side, the other side. Okay. and we're going to do the same thing. So your right knee is going to be bent, you don't want your knee to go over your toes, you want it above your ankle, and your back leg, just like that, that looks good, you're going to reach, and if you can, bring your right hand down to the inside of your right foot, and kind of open up with your left hand like this. There you go. The spirit stretches and it opens us to new flexibility. And now keep feet, bend your, straighten your right leg. And come back down. And if you can reach down both hands on either side of your foot. Otherwise, you can do like what Bob's doing. You just kind of reach from as much as you can. And we're going to do the same thing with our right hand on the inside of our right foot. And then keeping your legs straight, both of your legs straight, and then open up. Open up to when we are open and flexible, we see the world in a new way. Look at that smile. <laughs> he sees the world in a new way and it makes him smile. Now, all you're going to do is just come back up to stand. Bring your feet together. Little mountain pose. Breathe in and bring your arms up. Exhale and bring them together at your chest. And take a deep breath in. With an open heart, exhale, I am present with the Spirit. And a little bow and amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the song and the story and the movements and yoga with Bob. And now we're going to close out our time with the daily examine. And remember, this is a really great way to end your day, too. So cut it out, put it by your bed. And each night you can go through those questions and say this little prayer and just reconnect with yourself and with God and think about how you want to start your day tomorrow. So, let's begin. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Think to yourself, what surprised you today? you today? When did you share kindness today? When didn't you share kindness today? And what are you most thankful for today? Take all the time you need with those questions. And when you're done, let's close with our prayer. God with us, you lead us on life's path. Move our hearts so we can be there for others along the way. Amen. Amen.